Hi folks, I'm Casey LaCourse, and I am the host of this video showcase called Hearts of the West. It's Western music, cowboy poetry, and Western storytelling. You're going to find a lot of uh, good entertainment on here. There's something for everybody. I post a new showcase every Tuesday, and I've been doing this about two years now, and all the showcases are uh, archived on all my social media, Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube. So check them out. You're going to enjoy them. All right, I'm going to start off with a friend's poem. Her name is Susan O'Connell, and she lives down in uh, Southern California, and she is an excellent writer and an excellent cowboy poet. And uh, she is also, she's won awards for her poetry, and uh, part of the, uh, the prize was having her poetry published in uh, Western Magazine, which is pretty cool. So, uh, and she's also a distant relative of the man that this next poem is about. So uh, have a listen, all right. It's titled, Peace at the End by Susan O'Connell. He is one of the West's most enduring tales. Long after the man himself is gone, history has a way of blending truth and myth. So our heroes will always live on. Wyatt Earp has been glorified, a legend of America's past, but trying to find the real man in the myth might reveal the truth at last. He had the same faults as you or I. He had his share of adventure and betrayal. Was he a hero or a man with flaws? It depends on who tells the tale. In his own words, some past deeds caused remorse, poor judgment, or petty crime. He was embarrassed by all of the acclaim and esteem somehow softened by retelling and time. But he played the hand that he was dealt and found his own way to fit in and belong. He hoped that his life had some value and worth and the right choices outnumbered the wrong. Would Wyatt have changed his life if given the choice? Did he regret the winding path that he chose? I think at the end he wondered what might have been since his last words were suppose, suppose. Now, ain't that something. All right, folks, let's get on with the showcase. And I'll see y'all back here next Tuesday. Well, this, this, is, this is moose roping. <clears throat> A lot of times I when, I, when I make up names for characters in my poems, I use biblical names. Oh, do you? I get, just pick names out of the Bible. Methuselah. I haven't done that one yet. Macab, <laughs> <laughs> Talara. Yeah. You know, some of those ones you can't pronounce. You're like, I don't know, this guy alphabet. Levi was a young buckaroo who just plain loved his work. He'd grown up a cowboy and he knew doing hard, no shirk. Like a lot of salty cowhands, Levi had his favorite roles. No one ever questioned but what his was building horses from foals. They say the man was forked, meaning he rides a bronc real well. He's the man you want to call when you got a snorty one to quell. Up in Idaho one fall morning, can't rightly name the year, over near the Montana border, Levi must have been bored a rope and steer. He was riding out on a good mount, Levi built him so he knew. Gazing out there across the draw, got him an idea without thinking it through. <laughs> He'd spied a big old mossy critter rubbing his antlers on a spruce. What better test of a cow pony than to try and rope a moose? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't look all that challenging, though them antlers was pretty wide. But tooth be told, they weren't no more than some longhorns that he'd tried. Well, he had to jump across a wash to get close enough for roping. It didn't look very wide at all, so he spurred that gelding to hoping. First that gelding's back feet slipped as the bank gave way on the west, causing the, both the horse's forelegs to trip on the eastern crest. They say they both somersaulted over to the Montana side. Good news is, neither was serious hurt. Well, if you don't tally in their pride. <laughs> One foot was still hanging in the stirrup when Levi finally come to. His head was all foggy and spinning, trying to figure out where was who. 
Finally, his head started clearing after being knocked silly by the force, but his eyes were all rolled back and he kept yelling, somebody catch my horse. <laughs> <laughs> that gelding was ground hitch trained. He stood there staring down at his rider as if he wanted to try the moose again. Maybe they'd do another fun glider. <laughs> another puncher who witnessed it all trotted over to render aid, helping Levi up onto his feet while praising the horsemanship he displayed. <laughs> Levi can't remember the rest of that day, but he laughs about it now saying, it's just another memory of this cowboy life where he's staying. Levi's a mite stove up these days, cowboying down on the Great Basin. Cowboying down the Great Basin now. Sure enough, every once in a while, some green hand will ask him about the how. Ain't had the nerve to ask him myself, but I'm willing to bet my pay. Them moose can all rest easy now, knowing they're no longer Levi's rope and prey. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Howdy folks. Thanks for stopping by for another Yonder and Tale. My name is Rick Goodell. Some people call me Yonder. I write the poetry. If you like it, if you like what you hear, you can go to the website. There's a lot more of my poetry there. The website is yonderintales.com. There's no G at the end of Yonderin and no space between Yonderin and Tales. Well, today's poem was inspired by a painting by the famous cowboy artist, Mr. Teal Blake. He's a Texan, but he was born here in Montana, so we still claim him. He called his painting Ranch Water. It was picked up by a cowboy art spur at the Bardi Ranch for Cowboy Poetry Week. They published his poster and this poem, I'm proud to say, honored uh, in April of 2020. I call it The Wise and the Quick. It had been a dry ride from Can't See Through Can. Old Buck was parched and so was young Dan. We saw the small pool as we cleared over the rise and trotted on over to no one's surprise. Young Dan got there first and waited on in and when he was quenched, well, he drank once again. Old Buck being wiser, his drinking was measured and soon he was slaked by the water he treasured. Young Dan, on t'other hand, splashed and slurped on, clear down to hoof mud till sweet water was gone. He searched north and south, querying skyward and down, his belly a sloshing, but not a drop could be found. What have I at? Rot, his gaze seemed to ask, but his lack of years weren't up to the task. Enter Buck once again, the wiser, the sage, Mosing alongside his young friend Dan to engage. Gotta pace yourself, bemoaned Buck in sorrow, whether water or gate. Save some for tomorrow. Young Dan stopped searching and studied Buck straight, absorbing shrewd words from his mentor and mate. Enlightened, Dan nodded, his tack all a jerkin', and I swear on my saddle, old Buck peeked over a smirkin'. Each took up position, standing nose to tail, in comfort and safety, and flicking flies off to hail. Old bull, young bull, can't always know how, but friendships develop when we let go and allow. So, Dan's got more go, but Buck's got more stick, and together, they're better, the wise and the quick. Thank you. I reached out my arms and I touched you With soft words I whispered your name I held your love on the tips of my fingers But that was as close as it came My had a vision of sweetness Yielding beneath my command I held you right on the chips of my fingers But I let you slip right through my hand I let you slip right through Oh, 
somebody to you when I was in the king. I should have known from the start. It's a long, long way from the tips of my fingers to the love in Love hidden deep in my heart. I held your love on the tips of my fingers, but I let you slip right through my hand. I let you. Picturesque, silhouetted on the skyline, dark against the sky, a horse and rider standing, a few clouds floating high. You can see the rifle stock protruding past the horn of a slick fork center fire, weathered, scarred, and worn. The sinking sun has colored the sky with awesome hues of red and gold and pinkish lines, along with a darkening blue. The riders wearing bat wings with conchos down the side, on the horse just visible, a brand upon its side. Its standing kind of hip shot looks like a dappled gray. You can't see the bridle, his head is turned away. He's looking down into a valley with shades of red and greens, with willow trees and aspen growing long a wispy stream. The hills around are darkened with black and umber brown, soon to disappear as the evening sun goes down. He steps back from his canvas and views his western scene at the picture he's created of a place he's never seen. <laughs> 